All right, so a correlation will tell us the degree to which two variables are related. So again, we're going to get an R statistic, so that's what uh, stands for correlation. We're calculating an R statistic. Here is the formula for it. So here we have sum of squares x, y. So in essence, this is our covariance. This is how much they vary together. And then we're taking that over the square root of the sum of squares of x times the sum of squares of y. Now, I hope that you remember sum of squares from our earlier calculations. If you don't, please take a second, pause the video, go back through your notes to remind yourself what the sum of squares are. If you're good on sum of squares, let's push forward. So going back to our two circles, so here we have a green circle representing the variance in x. We have this bluish circle representing the variance of y. So we have variables x and y, of course. And then where they overlap is called the covariance. So covary, they change together. So the variance of x, we have the variance of y, and then how much they are changing together. In our uh, formula here, sum of squares x times y, that is our overlap area right here. Our denominator, the sum of squares x, is represented by this green circle, of course. So everything within this green circle is going to be the variance of x, right? So how much x changes goes in the denominator right here in this green sum of squares x. And then we have variable y uh, and its variance. So all of this blue area, including the part that overlaps, right? So sum of squares of y. And then in our numerator, of course, is that area that overlaps. I probably can't match that pink color at this point, but this is our covariance right here in the formula there. So we have in our numerator the relationship that we're interested in, right? We want to know how much they vary together. In the denominator, we have that extra stuff, that parts, those parts that change uh, with no relation to the other variable. This should look very similar to the kind of pattern that we've been seeing all semester. In the new numerator, so that top part of the formula, we typically see you know, the difference between groups. It's the, the relationship, the difference that we're interested in. And then in the denominator is the whatever we're controlling for. So we're controlling for those individual differences, those within groups differences, right? Not everyone reacts the same way. So in the numerator we have what we're interested in and the denominator we're basically dividing out all of that excess stuff. So in the real world uh, how do we calculate this, meaning with real data, how do we calculate this? So I've created an Excel sheet for us. Again, this should look very, very similar to you. Uh, this is example 15.1 from your textbook, from the Privaterra textbook. So is there a relationship between mood and eating? I'm assuming I've actually forgotten, but I assume this is how many calories you eat or something similar to that. So the better your mood, the less you eat, the better your mood, you know, whatever the example happens to be. Uh, we have eight observations, eight data points here. Same thing for that eating variable, eight people, eight observations from those eight people. And then I have some grade in parts for us to calculate, which good news, you've already done this, right? So uh, we're going to take the raw score minus the mean. And then we'll square that, we'll sum that to get the sum of squares. We've already uh, done this before, right? So let's go through that. And again, I will link this. So hopefully you can take a second to download this worksheet and work through it with me. I think that will help you uh, help you to understand what's going on here. So if we go down to B11, we're asking for a sum here. So hopefully you remember, equals sum, open parentheses, select all that data, hit enter. Then we need the count, it's going to be equals, count, select the data range, same thing there, hit enter. We remember from the early weeks together that to find the mean, we do equals, we could do equals average, select the data, or we could take the sum 
over the number of observations. Now just to get in the habit of really looking at this data overall, you know, just what we're interested in, but also to get a sense of the data as a whole, I do want to look at the minimum equals min. Uh, I also want to look at the maximum, which is equals max. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, from there, uh, we have a couple of things to do here. So we need to take the raw score. So we'll take this raw score and subtract the mean. So do equals, touch that raw score minus the mean there. Now I'm going to do a dollar sign before the B, dollar sign before the 13, so that I can just grab this and drag it down. From there, in cell D2, we need to square some things, right? So I can do equals C2 times C2. We're just taking 2 times 2, right, to get 4. So that's that deviance squared. So now we have our deviation scores. We have our squared deviation scores. We need to add those. So same thing, uh, equals sum, and then select the data. Or you can go where we did the sum before in B11 and drag that little box across. Our sum of deviation scores, remember, should always be zero because the mean is your mathematical balance point. If this number is not zero, you have a problem. Now we only need the sum of squares, but again, I'm a big fan of really looking at this data before we draw any conclusions from it. So let's go ahead and get our sample variance real quick. So we remember sample variance equals our sum of squares over n minus 1. So we take n minus 1. Remember, population would be over n, but typically we're dealing with samples, so we're going to subtract 1 there forgot to close my parentheses, so Excel is fixing my error there. And now we're free to calculate our standard deviation. Of course, the standard deviation is just going to be the square root of our variance. Hit Enter. Now we know we have, uh, for mood, for our variable mood, eight participants. We have a mean of four. Our sum of squares are 28. Sample variance is four with a sample standard deviation of 2. Now I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to fill in um, these columns right here. So I'm just going to do what we just did, uh, but there's no reason for you all to suffer through that. So go ahead and pause the video here, fill in these numbers, and then we'll come back when all of this is done. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you filled all of these in. Again, if you didn't do it, it is so easy to sit here and continue watching the video without participating, but I promise you, if you work through these things with me, you will have such an easier time on your homework. So please do that if you haven't already. If you have already done that, I do apologize for harping here. Now, we do have a couple of extra things that we have to calculate. So over here in column K, we have x1 minus x1 bar times y2 minus y2 bar. So essentially what we're doing here, we're taking the deviation scores for our x variable, we're multiplying them by the deviation scores of our y variable. So I can do that pretty easily, just do equals, and then go over to our deviation scores for x, I'll multiply times the deviation scores of y, hit enter, and I can actually just drag this down. Of course, the sum of squares x times the sum of squares y will just be the sum of everything in that column, so equals sum, and then select our data. So from here, we have a couple of things going on. So we have uh, sum of squares for our x variable, sum of squares for our y variable. We have the sum of squares x times the sum of squares y. Sometimes that is referred to as the sum of squares cross products. Let me type that out for you. Sum of squares cross products. That's just referring to the fact that we took the sum of squares for x, multiplied it times the sum of squares for y. So sum of squares x times y is also called the sum of squares cross products. Now that we have all of our sums of squares, we are ready to enter our formula here. So I've given you this image 
of our formula sum of squares x, y over the square root of sum of squares x times the sum of squares y. I'd like you to do this in a few steps here. Uh, so let's see, I'm missing a couple of things here. Let me just uh, enter that in real quick. And then this should be, I believe I wanted r squared there. So we'll do an r squared there. So let's do this in a couple of steps. Let's do the numerator first. So the sum of squares x, y, or the sum of squares cross products goes in the numerator. To do that equals, and we're just going to select that value. We don't have to do anything else. From there, uh, we need to take the square root. So equals square root, open parentheses. I'm going to overdo it with parentheses as usual, just to be safe. Now, the square root of the sums of sum of squares for x. So we know that is over here in D11. We'll put those in there, open up a new uh, parentheses, and we need the sum of squares for y. We know that's right here in I11. So we'll select that, close that parentheses, and then close that square root. All right, so there we have equals, square root, open parentheses, open parentheses, cell reference to D11, close parentheses, times, so I did the little asterisk there, open parentheses, uh, sum of squares y in I11, close parentheses, close parentheses, and this is our value there. Now, we just have to divide it out there, so in this gray box, equals negative 835 over 1122, hit enter. We know our r value is negative 0.7. Four, four. Now we need our effect size. We need to make this a little bit easier to understand. You have a negative 7.44. I am not quite sure how to interpret that. We need our coefficient of determination. In other words, our r squared equals r times r. So our r squared is 0.55. So here we can say 55% of the variance in mood can be attributed to the variance in X. So 55% of the variance in mood can be attributed to the variance in Y. That is a very nice sized correlation. Typically in psychological research, social sciences research, uh, quite frankly, we'll get excited about a 0.2. Uh, so a 0.5 would be uh, quite the correlation. You could probably publish that and be good to go. Of course, we have to do hypothesis testing and all of those kinds of things. But if you had a statistically significant correlation with an R squared of 0.55, that would be a very good day for you as a researcher. So what does this mean? We have a negative correlation. Remember, we can have positive correlation, negative correlation, no correlation, right? So three options here. We know negative 0.744. That is really close to a perfect correlation, right? But it's going to be in opposite uh, directions. So as one increases, the other is decreasing. So higher moods are associated with lower or eating fewer calories. The higher your mood, the lower your calories here. If this had been a positive correlation, then we would say the higher the mood, the more calories you eat. So see how they go in the same direction there. With a negative correlation, they're going to go in opposite directions. So the higher your mood, the fewer calories you eat. That is correlation. I do want to show you one more thing here because oftentimes we talk about scatter plots with correlation. And I drew several for you. Um, drew several for you in that first lecture. Uh, so let's do that real quick in Microsoft Excel, just in case you don't know how. Now, um, I have, actually I can shift this up a little bit. So here you can see uh, the top part of my screen. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, I've copied my data here, so my eight scores for mood, my eight associated scores for eating. I'm going to select all of this with the headers. Go to Insert, Charts. You can go to Recommended Charts if you want. Uh, it'll probably tell you Scatter is the very first thing that comes up. You can select that. That's just fine. I'm going to actually go right here to Scatter and choose that right now. So here you can see, um, let's do this first person. They scored a 1 on mood and 650 was their calorie intake. So if you go along this x-axis, so this is the bottom one, you go over 1 up to 650. That is your data point. So here's our data. You can see it trends downward. If you go to this plus sign, you can add titles. So let me do that real quick to increase our understanding here. So we know on the x-axis we have mood, on the y we have eating, probably calories or something, uh, so how much you eat. Uh, so you can kind of see a negative trend right here. Again, we can go to add go to the bottom there, we can add that trend line so you can see it's going in that negative direction so that as your mood score gets higher the calorie intake actually goes down so that reflects your negative correlation. So again you can use your scatter plot here to check for homoscedasticity, you can check for linearity so you can see here this is linear, you can also see roughly approximate uh, variability across the levels here. Uh, you could check for normality using skew, kurtosis, um, your histograms, all of those kinds of things. Scatter plots are incredibly helpful uh, visualization tools. So that's how you calculate uh, correlation. It's actually, I think, after everything we've been through, this is one of the easier things. You just calculate some sums of squares and then plug them into the formula. Just in case, uh, of course, if you have any questions, do let me know. In this same Excel sheet, I have set you up to complete number 6 in your homework. It's number 22 in your textbook. I've also set you up to complete number 7 of your homework, number 23 from your textbook. So just copy what we've done here, uh, and you'll be good to go. And again, as always, if you guys have any questions, please send me an email. I'm here to help.